Hey guys, this is Ish at Ish's Tactical Solutions, and today uh, we're going to go over the 10 different cartridges we have for the AR-15. Um, we put up a similar uh, video uh, a few years back, two years back. Uh, it was the uh, five calibers of uh, the AR-15. Uh, we call them calibers because it, uh, it gets more views. Uh, we, we know that they're cartridges, uh, and this one will be called 10 calibers. So we'll, we'll get started on them. Um, five of them we haven't done yet. Five of them are uh, kind of a, a, a rehash of the ones we've done before. So uh, we'll go over those a little bit briefer, uh, the ones we've already done. Um, first one is the smallest one, which is our 223 5.56. As we talked about it before, this is old technology, old technology that still works. Um, this one here is a 55 grain. Um, I've used up to 77 grain, even even 110 grain with subsonic. Um, I've shot 800 yards with this uh, accurately, and uh, we we actually have that video one day. We'll we'll put it up, and uh, that was with a 75 grain 18 inch barrel, and. Uh, there's some uh, pluses and uh, there's some minuses about uh, this round. So, with this cartridge, it's uh, one of the uh, pluses is, is the ammo is very available. There's plenty of it. Uh, of course, it's a very popular round and it's what everything is based off in the first place when it comes to AR-15. Uh, and uh, just a all around pretty good uh, round for a its time, uh, you know, it, it being an older uh, cartridge. And uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, minuses about it is is you know, the twist in your barrel. So you have one seven, one eight, one or nine. And uh, one and eight will shoot about every one of them halfway accurately. Anyways, it kind of likes a 75 grain. Uh, the one and nine uh, basically won't shoot anything over that 63 grain uh, or won't shoot it accurately, and then when you get into 75, 77, you flip. And of course, the one in uh, one and seven is the other way around. So the 55, 62, 63 grain, uh, they either flip or don't shoot accurately, but it shoots the 75 and 77 real accurate. So it's something that you got to keep in mind with this, and that's one of the minuses on it. Other minuses are things like uh, it only leaves a small hole. It's only a 22 caliber. And uh, even though this is battle proven, you know, there's been some complaints about it. It is a very accurate round, and uh, that's obviously a plus about it. Great varmint round, a minus about it also is medium gain uh, to bigger gain. It's not, it's not a good round, period. And uh, for self-defense, you know, uh, there's a lot better things out there, but at least you could practice with this, uh, this cartridge because it's readily available and uh, it's not that expensive. Having an AR built, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, it's uh, having an AR built, it, you, know, you don't have to change anything. And uh, especially these days, since Trump has become president, uh, the price of ARs has really went down. Uh, the second cartridge we're gonna talk about here is the new 2545 Sharks. Uh, it's been out for a couple of years, few years. But uh, for us, it's a, a new cartridge to talk, talk about, 25 caliber, obviously. Uh, it'll send an 87 grain uh, peel um, at 3,000 feet per second, which is about the same as that 223 uh, in FPS. Uh, obviously, it's got more knockdown power. Uh, this thing shoots amazing groups at 800 yards, and uh, this has been one heck of a round. And uh, it takes a 223 casing. Uh, which means that uh, to, to go to this uh, caliber, this cartridge, the only thing that's got to be changed on the AR is the barrel. This is, uh, uh, SRC is the one that uh, came up with it, and uh, it has been a remarkable round. We've knocked out uh, two deer with it, no problem at all, many coyotes, and uh, it's just been a great, great round. So anyways, this 2545 Sharps is a, a very, very good round. Um, we use in, uh, they make a hundred grain for, uh, they call it the swine smasher, I think it is. We haven't got to test it out, but we do have it. Uh, and they've got some uh, varmint rounds. I think they're 75 grain. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. So they're coming out with more and more uh, different uh, rounds for this thing. Uh, they got full metal jackets. Uh, they've got uh, ballistic tips. 
Another great thing about it was is I'd done the remanufactured ammo or the reloaded ammo and I still at 400 yards held well under uh, 2 MOA and uh, at 800 yards I was holding just over an MOA and at 100 yards I was holding just over half an MOA. So this thing, uh, it's a very accurate round, it's kicking off, uh, functions well in the AR, I, I look to see it to, to do well. Uh, the next one we're talking about is our 6.5 Grendel. We're not going to talk too much about it because we have before. You guys know that this is one of my favorite rounds or cartridges. Um, uh, the plus about it is it's amazing knockdown. Uh, it's got uh, it's extremely accurate, um, and the price on the ammo has finally started to come down some. And uh, the only problems I had before is functioning. Things have uh, kind of changed on that. Uh, you know, uh, between uh, blending uh, and uh, uh, polishing chambers. Uh, good gas blocks are usually needed with them as well, uh, make them function correctly. And obviously, uh, those are downsides of it, but once you get it all squared away, you'll never go back when it comes 6.5 Grendel. It's a great, great cartridge, guys. Um, uh, another downside about it is is different magazine, different bolt and different barrel so it's a little bit more different change in the AR platform all right but it's a uh, it's a great round I think you guys uh, anybody that shoots a 6.5 will tell you that they they love it and enjoy it next one is a 6.8 SPC or what uh, people don't know is 6.8 SPC2 uh, this is also one of my, my uh, rounds that I like to use uh, it's a little bit cheaper than 6.5 Grendel actually but the 6.8 SPC is a good hunting round. Uh, it's not as accurate as 6.5. I have taken it out to 800 yards. I held under uh, 2 MOA. Um, at 400 yards, I held under 2 MOA. And at 100 yards, I held under 1 MOA. Uh, though it's not as accurate as the 6.5, it's drag functioning ain't as good either. But um, it still turned out to be a good uh, uh, rifle or round. And this one functions so well and this has been considered uh, many times by the military to replace uh, the 6 point uh, or the 223 I don't know if they'll ever do it I say it is a better round than 223 but there are some other rounds that have more positives about it negative again is magazine bolt and uh, barrel has to be changed all for just this round to go into the AR platform uh, but uh, guys, uh, this will probably do everything that you want it to. And next one we're going to go into is a Wildcat uh, cat round. Uh, it's the 277 Wolverine. The 277 Wolverine has turned out to be one of my favorite ones to, to mess around with. And I'll explain. It's a 270 caliber. It's using that 556 or 223 casing. All right. Um, it shoots between a 90 and 110 grain bullet. Uh, the FPS is around 2600 on the uh, on the 100, so you know a little less for the 110, a little bit more for the 90 grain. Uh, I shot the 90 grain in the very beginning, and I held half an ammo away with it at 100 yards. This thing was shooting amazing group. I shot at uh, 200 yards or 400 yards, and I held under a uh, uh, one ammo away. And then uh, at, I've been able to peg the uh, target at 800 yards with no issues at all. Um, I took it out to hunt. I was nailing Yodis with it, doing a good job with that 90 grain. And then I shot a deer three times with it. You guys go back to review. I wasn't impressed with it. And I moved to 100 and 110 grain. Uh, still almost just as accurate as 90 grain, but it actually gets the job done. 277 Wolverine. Uh, pluses are uh, the only thing that needs to be changed is the barrel. Um, minuses is getting a hold of ammo. I'm always having issues getting a hold of the ammo for the 277 Wolverine. It's supposed to be just as good as a 300 Blackout when it comes to subsonic, but uh, we haven't. We're doing a comparison uh, here soon with a subsonic shootout, and we'll actually see it, if it really is. I have used subsonic shooting uh, coyotes at nighttime, uh, but really don't know uh, if it's any more accurate than 300 blackout and that brings us to the uh 300 blackout so here's the the famous 300 blackout and uh 
you know, uh, it's got a SAMI report and it's got everything. Uh, there's a lot of technology that, uh, behind this these days because everybody's got a round out for it. A lot of different gun builds for it and stuff. And of course, I do my own, but uh, different barrels. Uh, everything's got a little bit cheaper with it too. Uh, it's pluses is that ammo is not very expensive. Uh, reloading is not very expensive. And uh, like I said, you can get a lot of reloading data out of this. It does have a lot of knockdown power. What it's missing out for me and why it's not one of my favorite rounds, and I know I'm going to get some hate over this, but it's not very accurate. It's as touchy as the 223 when it comes to twist of a barrel. Now, the great part is, is the length of the barrel really doesn't matter with the 300 blackout. But with the twist of the barrel, it is important. And when you're shooting between that 120 and 147, you got to get the grain of the bullet correct with the uh, twist of the barrel. All right. That is its minus. Uh, another plus is uh, obviously you use the bolt. Uh, well, everything's the same as 223 except for the uh, barrel. Um, and that is a plus. And like I said, barrels aren't as expensive as they used to be. Um, uh, price of these have really came down. What a big positive that I didn't mention before is it's subsonic ease. In fact, I will say that at 50 to 75 yards, I've shot my subsonics and the subsonics that uh, uh, other companies have sent me, and I'm shooting a better in, uh, grouping than I am with supersonic. So that is something to keep in mind when you're talking about the 300 blackout, whether you want it. If you're going to use subsonic, this is a round to go to. Supersonic, it's not that great. 400 yards, it took everything I had to hold uh, four MOA. I mean, it's just... Uh, not that accurate of a round. It's very picky on the grain and accuracy to get them. And if you can find out that perfect uh, mixture, then you'll probably be good. If not, you're not going to be impressed with it. Subsonic, self-defense inside the house, great. Great knockdown, great hunting round. If that's what you want to use it for. Next one is 7.62x39. All right, this is the old Russian 7.62x39. Um, we didn't have it in the one before. Uh, that's because we didn't have the setup for it yet, and that's because 7, uh, 7.62x39 in an AR platform, and if you go back to my review on the 7.62x39 Mutant, I talk about this, is magazines, bolts, even the bolt carriers, uh, there's just been problems out of the AR platform getting it to function. There just And a lot of things have been changed in it to make it a little bit better, but they still have problems. Then they came out with the Mutant basically using a bigger bulk, a bulkier bolt and using the bolt carrier out of an AR-10, cutting it in half almost, and uh, making some other changes. They have made, uh, used an AK-47 magazine is the most important one, and they have been able to make this uh, function. So this is a heck of a round coming out of that mutant. Uh, and different companies are now making uh, their own uh, style of AR-15 platformish. Uh, really isn't even a true AR-15 platform, but and uh, making this round work. This is what I found out about it. I've always used it in AK-47. I've always said it's inaccurate. I was wrong. AK-47 is inaccurate. The sights on the AK-47 are crap. When you put this thing on an AR-15 platform and you put a good scope of glass on it, this is a very accurate round. All right. Uh, I would say more accurate than the 300 blackout that was to replace it, all right? And we, saw, uh, we already know because it's battle proven, and we know that it does create a lot of damage. Uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, been shot by this 762x39. Next uh, one we're going to go to is 762x40WT. This is made by Wilson Combat. This is also the replace 762x39. It has about 200 uh, uh, pounds per square inch. Of more uh, damage or pressure, uh, and it uh, it's moving. I think it was a uh, hundred to 150 feet per second faster than 762 uh, by 39. So 762 by 40 WT has more knockdown than 762 by 39, and it's moving a little bit faster. So uh, uh, its norm is 125 instead of 123. Uh, and uh, so it gives you a little bit more weight, not, not enough to really count. But here's the thing. This is a, much, uh, is a more accurate round than 762 by 39. It's more accurate than the 300 blackout. And it creates more damage than both of them. So this round right here has turned out to be a great round. It really hadn't uh, taken off. And uh, I foresee it here in the future taking off because this is a good round, guys. 
and uh, I think that you're uh, really going to enjoy it. 10 to 223 casing. Uh, okay, so uh, casings are re readily available, and uh, I do say you need to reload it because one of the downsides is ammo is kind of expensive. And uh, right now, I only get it from one place, and that's Wilson Combat, unless I'm reloading. So uh, it's in that 30 caliber with the 762 by 39 and the 300 blackout. Uh, and I hold just under a MOA at 100 yards with it, and uh, just over an MOA at 800 yards. And I got a video up of us shooting at 800 yards. You wouldn't think a round like this would go that far and be that accurate, but it is. And uh, it's just been a great round uh, so far. Another plus is, is all you need is a barrel change. Uh, everything else is the same as a, the AR-15 platform. Wilson Combat does make a magazine for this, uh, but uh, I don't have any problems out of the AR-15 magazines or M4 magazines that I already have, M16 magazines, um, even though I have bought a, a few of their magazines. And uh, functions great, shoots great. Shot a hog, uh, two hogs with this, and had no problem out of it. Shot plenty of coyotes, no problem out of it. I'd like to see this round take off and get more options. Uh, and the next one we're going to talk about is the 375 SOCOM. Now, the 375 SOCOM is sitting up here, and then the next one's 50 Bell Wolf. So before anybody gets on me uh, about not having the 458 SOCOM up here, one, I'm going to say 458 SOCOM is going to be on the 15 calibers or cartridges. Uh, review. It's just not on this one because I wanted something between that 30 caliber and the 50 or 458. So this is the perfect match. This comes from Tromex out of here in the state of Oklahoma. It'll shoot anywhere from a 185 grain to 400 grain plus. Uh, it comes in subsonic variations. Uh, this thing is moving 2200 or 2400 feet per second with a, uh, a 200 grain. Uh, it's obviously a 30, uh, 37 caliber leaves a big hole, does a lot of damage. Very accurate for such a big round. It's more accurate than the 50 Beowulf, and yes, I have 458, even though it's not up here, and it's more accurate than the 458. This is kind of that perfect in-between. Uh, downside. Downside is, is uh, unless you know how to open up the, the uh, ejection port on an upper, you're going to have to get uh, upper from Tromex. Uh, but, uh, all you gotta do is change the bolt and the barrel, and uh, and you can have this 375 SOCOM. They make uh, magazines that make it function a little bit better for those round tip or uh, flat nose, and uh, yeah, sometimes it requires a little bit of chamber work with blending, but not a big deal, not that hard. I've had no malfunctions out of this on supersonic. I have on subsonic, but those are my reloads. So. Um, and I've shot plenty of uh, coyotes that I quit doing it and then it's a little bit of overkill, but I can't wait to go deer hunting with this round and I think it's gonna do magnificently. Later on, we're gonna stick it up against the 50 Beowulf uh, and do a comparison and then the 458. And that brings us to the 50 Beowulf. We're not gonna talk much about it, guys, because we already have. You're not gonna get much range out of this. In fact, at 375, you can get much more range you can than out of the 50 Beowulf. Uh, at 20 or 200 yards, it drops something like 13 inches went from 2 to 225, which is crazy. Drop drops off the face of the earth. But this is a very effective round, and it comes in very many different from 275 to 475 grain, and moving anywhere from 1700 feet per second to 2200 feet per second. And uh, it's 50 bell bit. Well, it's been one of my favorite uh, cartridges for a while now, and. Uh, you shoot anything with this, it stops it. It's an amazing round when it comes to that, and it's pretty accurate for a gun that big. It destroys everything within its path. Uh, it's obviously limited on uh, distance, so, so uh, a nice little barrel change. Uh, same thing with the uh, ejection port. And uh, um, you're supposed to be able to bend out M4, AR-15, M16, whatever uh, magazines, and be able to load this in there. I'm going to tell you not to do that and go ahead and get it from Alexander Arms, that's who invented this. Uh, get their magazines and just use their magazines for it. All right. So, guys, this is uh, our 10 cartridges uh, review. It took us a while to get here, but we're finally there. We got them done. Um, we are going to do a 15, so we're going to move up to 5, but uh, 
before everybody gets excited on that, uh, I got to do uh, five uh, cartridges on the AR-10 platform first. Uh, we've already obviously got 308 locked down, 6.5 Creedmoor locked down. Uh, we're looking at the 45 Raptor, so we should have it locked down here soon. Uh, and uh, we have the 338 Federal locked down, and we'll be looking at uh, different other. Uh, you know uh, options so we may have one or two uh, room for one or two different if anybody wants to uh, to see a different cartridge in there the only lockdown we have on our next 15 is 458 so SOCOM out of the AR-15 so if you have any suggestions put it down there I've been looking at the 300 uh, o OSSM uh, but uh, now that um, uh, Olympic Arms is no longer in uh, in business I may not do it um, there I, I've been looking at all different types of uh, cartridges and uh, so right now I have four semi open to to, to do uh, the only lockdown I really really have is the 458 so calm I've got my heart set on it oh I'm sorry and the 204 Ruger so I've got three openings I got a 204 Ruger lockdown from Wilson combat so you guys, uh, if you want to see the, the other three, uh, give me suggestions and I'll check them all out and uh, we'll do a review on 15. Uh, but like I said, our next one's going to be AR-10 platform, five of them. That'll probably take us uh, six to nine months because, you know, guys, i got to get them together. you got to get the video done. It's usually the hardest thing, but um, when it's done, it's, uh, check it out and uh, tell me what you think, guys. Uh, give us a like, subscribe, make us a favorite, God, family, country, on that order. Thanks for watching.